So let me get organized here. Because you know me, right? We never know if the notebook comes out or if the notebook doesn't come out. I don't know. One, one day I would like it to, to actually appear and get, I get to keep it. So um, the one thing I want to share, ladies, is here we go. Right? Here we go. Conference has started. We have saturated the stage for his presence. And Moses said in the Old Testament, God, if you don't go before us, we don't want to go. So I want to pray before I share because I know there's a word he wants to give you. I just don't know what that word is yet. I have something, but you never know. So Father, we are very serious that if you do not go before us, we don't want to take another step because we don't want this just to be a meeting. We want this to be a place where we draw the line, draw a line in the sand and say, from this day forward, we are going to have a faith that withstands the test of time. We are going to have a faith that is strong, that is shapeable, that tears down mountains, that destroys the works of the enemy, gives us a voice and allows us to be the warrior women that you created us to be. Father, none of this was for show. All of it was for your glory. So I ask you to give me the words that you want these women to, to hear tonight as we prepare for tomorrow in Jesus' name. Ladies, we have done the very best that we could to, today and tonight, tomorrow, to set an atmosphere where you're going to meet God, you're going to be changed. And that's just not a statement because what we have put on paper has been changed multiple times and actually stripped because one of the things that we kept talking about over and over that this had to be unscripted. It could not be so planned out, Charlie that we planned the Holy Spirit totally out of it. You don't need to hear my voice. You need to hear the word of the Lord. You don't need somebody to get up here and teach you the Bible. You need to hear the word of the Lord declared from this platform. And tomorrow, we have three anointed teachers that will do just that. And they have been, be, they have been preparing for months to give you this anointed word. There's going to be a segment tomorrow that we've entitled, Keeping It Real. And if you've been at our other, other events, you know that the real is an acronym for relationships, encouragement, accountability, and laughter. And we know that if we can keep those things at each of our meetings, then we're not only going to build a relationship with each other, but we're going to build a vertical relationship with our God. And it all starts from the inside out, because if we don't have that change on the inside out, we're never going to change on the outside. We can do all that we can to lift weights and lose, lift weights and lose weight. <laughs> yes, both of those things. We can do all that we can to fix ourselves and dress appropriately, but if we aren't being cleansed and restored and made new from the inside out, it is never going to hold. It is never going to change, correct? It is the soul, right? In the past, in the last couple of years, we've been learning the importance of soul healing. Our mind, our will, our emotions are being tormented every single day by the things that we see in this world. And it is not the world that is really tormenting us. The world wants us to be like the world. They, the world is what it's doing to us is reprogramming us. It's desensitizing us. It is pleasing us. It is tempting us. It is making life a privilege. So we would choose to be living a life that's privileged and ease instead of following the things of God, which sometimes is not all that easy because you might have to, goodness gracious, do things afraid, like maybe use your voice in a room full of 160 women. But, but what I'm learning is what is in you comes out. 
So when you open your mouth, what is coming out? Is it the word of God or is it the word of the world? And so that is the importance of sisterhood. And throughout scripture, God has had the habit of using unlikely people in unlikely situations and places to do unlikely things. So I want you to look at all those beautiful hearts sitting around your tables right now. They have, the hearts have faces. Guess what, ladies? You are the least likely. You have a beautiful heart, and you are the least likely. And all we have to do is say yes to God, and he will use you to change the world. I saw, um, I saw a meme or something on uh, Facebook, and it said that we were born with the ability to change someone's life, so don't ever waste it. So that's what we've tried to do in sisterhood is to teach our women uh, how to be refined for his glory. What does refining actually mean? It means that, guess what? God gets to polish us and he gets to chip us and he gets to make us the way that he created us to be, but somehow we forgot who we truly were. We lost our identity. We chose the world's identity because that was what was placed on us. For instance, uh, for, for years, all, even when I was little, you're shy. You're too shy. You can't get in front of people and talk. So I can remember standing in front of an English class with my hands on the podium, and I had a ring on, and through the whole, the whole time I was talking about Nancy Drew and that mystery book I was teaching or, or talking on, I never stopped twisting my ring. And I never looked out at the people. I was so embarrassed. But because that label of being shy was placed on me, I thought I would never have a voice. What label was placed on you from birth till now that you've never stepped out and said, no, that's not who God created me to be. God created me to be a daughter of the king, bold, one who speaks out, one who can trample the, the serpent and the lions, one who can declare the word of the Lord, one who doesn't have to put up with what the enemy is doing because I know God, he is faithful, he is faithful, and that's what platinum faith is all about. We have taught our women to use their voices and to do it afraid. We've taught them how to be refined. Last year, we taught them about watching God move. And it wasn't about anything that we were doing. Step back and pray and watch God do a thing. Because you know he can do a thing. He really can do a thing. And so we are uh, providing these moments of connection around the table because we were never, and you hear this all the time, we were never meant to, to live and do life by ourselves. And you know, when you do, you're, there is no encouragement, there is no correction, there is no accountability. So do you really think that you're getting closer to the things of God? Because if you are not intentional in your pursuit of the things of God, you know the world is intentional in pulling you in, back toward itself, right? So sisterhood is not just a moment in time. It is not just a moment in time. It's, let me, let me, let me, it's not a waste of time. It's a moment in time. Sisterhood is not a waste of time. It's a divine moment, a divine placement, because every lady, we, and we say this all the time, sitting around your table was placed there by God because, guess what? You get to speak a word to the people that are sitting at your table through life experiences. Remember the soul? We see, and we taught this um, at our last event, you see and you perceive out of the wounds of your soul, of the things that you've grown up. And maybe they were bad things. Maybe somebody said something to you that in their world is funny, but in your world was very painful because maybe you grew up with a father who beat you who would not allow you to speak, or you had to be a perfectionist because if you didn't do it right, he would get the belt. Or he would beat your mother. That's my story. And God allowed me to forgive my dad. I harbor no ill toward him, and he's, he's long since deceased. But we have the ability as women to get this word in us. And right before I came up 
uh, he took me to Psalm 139. And you said, I don't know really what I was going to talk about, but I knew he was going to give me a word. And he said, for there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before, and you have laid your hand upon me. We do not need notes to speak to somebody about Jesus. In the grocery store, you do not need to think about, okay, um, I, you know, I've got, did I write that down? So if, if they ask me about a question, am I going to be able to remember that? I don't know. Um, let, me, let me write this down. You're not going to forget, ladies. The Holy Spirit will not let you forget the Word of God. It will come out. And guess what? A person that approaches you is going to be a divine moment. It's going to be somebody that God has already been sending to meet you. Do you know what it took for God to, to masterfully craft that? So the woman gets up out of bed. She's got to go to the store. You got to, you're already in the store shopping. Somehow your buggies bump. They somehow bump. And now you're talking to one another. Do you know how God intricately put all of that together so that you could, in a moment of time, declare the word of the Lord to her? It doesn't mean we've got it all together, and it doesn't mean our lives are perfect. They are far from it. If I could ask for a, a show of hands in this room of people going through some stuff, I wonder how many people would, would raise their hands. And I'm not talking through one stuff. I'm talking about the pit. And maybe it's one thing after another after another, and why, God, is it me? Why, God? So, it, so that's what we've been learning. But guess what, ladies? This is 2024, and we're going to be learning what it means to have a platinum faith. And tomorrow, our guest speakers are going to be bringing it. They've already anointed. Just in the prayer time alone, I don't know if you sensed it, but there was such an anointing on Pastor Anita. There was a weightiness in the room. Did you not feel that? That's coming again tomorrow. And platinum faith, it is just simply trusting God with a faith that nothing is going to shake you, no matter what comes your way. And when people look at you and you're going through some stuff, they're going to say, wow, she didn't react that way. I wonder what's different about her. She, she maintained her peace. She didn't erupt. Oh, goodness, Maggie's not the Kraken anymore. <laughs> she maintains her peace. And for those of you who don't mo know me, I've got a story. But anyway, don't raise your hands if you've ever had a Kraken, Maggie, because that Maggie is dead. She now is a daughter of the king who knows her true identity. We, um, in Romans um, 8.28, and I have it written down here, it says, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit is right along helping us. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs, our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves, and we can be sure that every detail in our lives of love for God has worked into something good. That is what platinum faith is. That no matter what comes your way, you already know that God is working it together for your good. It's not going to decay. It's going to remain strong. And you get to be an example of a loving God, of a, of a God who, who crashes down mountains for his daughter. Somebody, a daughter who can approach his, his throne with mercy, with, with boldness to receive mercy and, and grace. And you don't have to grovel because maybe you did something wrong the day before. I'm going to close with um, a statement from Oswald Chamber, and then I'm going to share some weird analogy that doesn't even, <laughs> doesn't even go with sisterhood and doesn't even go with me. But you know what? We're going to share it. So Oswald Chamber said, living a life of faith means never knowing where you are being led, but it does mean loving and knowing the one who is leading. It is literally a life of faith, not of understanding and reason, a life of knowing him who calls us to go. And ladies, if you come with us in 2024, we are going to learn and to live a life of platinum faith. We're going to build on being refined. We're going to build on watching God move. We're going to build on getting our voices and doing things afraid. And now 
we're going to have a platinum faith that this world cannot destroy. And um, so a couple of months ago, and I'm not a big football fan. Is anybody else in the room? You like football, women? You just love football? Okay, okay. So I'm going to share this analogy, and I'm going to try to get the terms right because I'm not that girl. <laughs> My husband will watch it, and I'm on the sofa playing gummy drop, and all I do is, what color are we, are we rooting for? Because I don't know the names of teams, right? <laughs> so if there's a team that has like a teal purple, that's, I don't know who that is, but that's gorgeous color. Um, <laughs> My husband likes um, Tampa Bay and, I, and Miami. Okay, right? Is that, oh, he's over there. Okay, so I'm on the sofa, and then all of a sudden, I'm aware of this guy yelling something right before a play. And he kept doing it every time he got ready to throw the ball. And I asked Lon, what is, what is he doing? And I guess they mic quarterbacks now. I, this, he was a quarterback. I don't know his name. I think he plays for the Dallas Cowboys. Whoa, I got that one right. Okay, so. In fact, I have a video if you'd like to show that. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Wait, take. <laughs> Back of the end zone. There's CD Lamb. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. That's all I kept hearing. Here we go. So now, whenever that team comes on, I, kn I still don't know his name. I still don't know his name. But what is his name? It was <laughs> Prescott. <laughs> I'm not observant. But here we go intrigued me. And I wondered, why did they do that? Because I thought there was another quarterback that used to say Omaha or something. Why? Like, I don't get that. But then I realized he's, he is cueing his team that something is getting ready to happen, right? So I know, I still don't know terms, but this is what God kind of showed me. Isn't that weird that I'm talking about football? I don't have a clue what we're talking about. Okay, so the quarterback and faith. This is, this is football and faith. That's what I'm trying to teach us, right? Okay, so not, what I re re realized is that not every time the quarterback throws the ball does he ever get it straight down to the goal line for a touchdown. Sometimes he gets tackled. Sometimes he will throw the ball and the runner, the running back, might take a step before the enemy, the other team, tackles him to the ground, right? Um, sometimes they'll throw it and what it, he'll, he'll get a down. And I know if you get enough downs, you get to the touchdown, right? Oh, Woo! I know it, like four downs. I'm learning this. All because Prescott said, here we go, right? Here we go. I learned to love that team. So here's the analogy. <laughs> Our faith walk is never a solid throw from the quarterback to the end zone. Oh, I got that one too. Oh, Jesus is coming. Yes, he is. Woo! But here's the thing. God is our quarterback. Now, I don't vision him getting sacked. I just don't because, you know, but what if our daddy God, our daddy quarterback that's saying, here we go, right? Throwing his ball to his daughter. And maybe she doesn't get but one step in our faith walk before the enemy gets us. But you know what? I noticed the quarterback didn't stop. He throws it again. And sometimes the next, oh, and here's the beautiful thing. I thought that yellow line on the, on the ground, I asked Lon, how in the world did they get that line painted on that? <laughs> It's a truth, and it's digital. Like, they, put, they do that on computer. I thought, how in the world do they get that line every time? I'm innocent, and God loves me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so innocent. Okay, but God throws it, and we get to another down, and then another down. And then, but there is something where they lose yardage. So you got to a down, and then maybe you're taken back a couple of steps. 
But you know what? There is that goal line. And there are going to be days when God throws the ball and you will get it. And what I saw was that when they catch the ball in the end zone for a touchdown, they never remember the fumble or the fall that got him there. Isn't that incredible? And not only that, they do a little dance, you know? And they usually get penalized if they do too much of that dance. But if you played happy, I would show you that dance, but I'm not. But anyway, isn't that what amazing God will do to our platinum faith is that every step we take, every down we take, gets us to the prize if we don't take our eyes off of that prize. That's what we're going to be learning this year in sisterhood. So ladies, it took God teaching me how to play football. <laughs> not, not play football, but try to understand football and not just choose a team based on color, you know, because I love different color schemes and I don't like that green and yellow. Some of those teams have ugly green and yellow. I don't ever choose them. Huh? You do? I'm sorry. I just, oh. But anyway. <laughs> Here we go. So tomorrow, ladies, when you come into the building, here we go, right, at your tables. You're going to be saying that all night. When you get home to your family, you're going to be saying that because you know what? God is saying, ladies, here we go. Woo!